Okay, in this video we're going to discuss hyperlinks uh, and we're also going to learn a little bit about floating images in a body of text. Okay, so to do this we're going to need at least uh, two different documents. And hyperlinks allow you to jump between HTML documents or uh, jump between sections of a single HTML document. So we'll make uh, first a document about cats and then we'll make a document about dogs and we'll link between them. Okay, so uh, using Atom I can type HTML and press tab and this gives me the beginning of an HTML document. Um, you can type this out manually. Uh, this is cats and so in the body we're going to have h1 tag class main heading and this is cats and we're going to have a style portion as usual style portion we're going to reference the body tag and we're going to want to go ahead and do um, all elements should have box sizing border box so every single element is going to be sized with box sizing border box and as we discussed, what this does is when you specify the width of an element, it instead of just specifying the width of the content with uh, box sizing border box, it specifies the width of the content, the padding, and the border. And this um, this becomes uh, much more useful when you're trying to uh, center things in, in a larger uh, div, or uh, for example, a div that's uh, has a width and height of 100% something like that. Okay, so box sizing, border box on all of our elements. We have body and just to make sure everything's working. Um, got a background color in there. And we have main heading. and just a text align center to get the text centered up. Okay, So that's a nice beginning and we can double click this and it should open up uh, in Chrome and there we go we've got our uh, HTML page started here. We can shrink this down a little bit. Okay, so there's cats um, close that out and get colorization here. All right, um, <clears throat> in the body, normally there is some extra margin, so we're going to make that zero. Uh, and then basically, all we're going to do is we're going to add a div here in the main body, and we're going to have some text. So, this is kind of like an article based uh, type of layout. So we'll call this div. We'll have it. We'll give it the class article. And we'll get some text on cats. So we'll go to Wikipedia. Look for an article on cats. Okay, so, and we're just going to take some text here mainly just so we have something to paste into our document. All right, so we'll just copy all of this introductory text since this is just for demonstration purposes and we'll put that text into our document. Thank you Wikipedia. Um, we see there are paragraphs so we might want to add uh, paragraph tags and I can move uh, paragraph. I can move a line at a time in Atom by holding control and up and down arrow so I can move this up and down a line like that or you can just copy and paste if you'd like. 
Okay, but we're we're watching our indentation, so all of these paragraph tags are inside of the div tag, and all of the content in the paragraph tag is indented inside the paragraph tag, like so. And so then we have we create a p tag, and we just move that down, and then we have to indent this. Paragraph tags. All right, so we've got a nice div here. Um, it's the article div. We've got paragraph tags inside of it. So we're going to make the CSS styles. And first, let's just see what we have. Okay, so we've got a bunch of text here. It doesn't look very good though, right? There's no padding, um, nothing about this uh, speaks to me in terms of layout, right? So uh, one thing we might wanna do is make a background image on the body tag. And we can say, we'll use a URL, and we can say this is uh, HTTP place kitten. So Place Kitten allows you to place uh, randomly sized images of cats. Well, you can specify the size. Uh, it's placekitten.com. And then this, the size of our image, it's going to be uh, pretty, pretty wide. So, you know, 19, uh, 20 by 1080, something like that should give us a really large background image. Okay, and we can reload this page. Let's see what we have. Oops, we've got a semicolon there. Okay, so background image, reload the page, and sure enough, we have a very, very large image here, which is good. Um, but we want uh, it kind of centered in the screen, right? So we're going to want to add background position, and we might um, say we want to center that, and then. Uh, we also want to align the tops of the, the viewport and the image. So we refresh, and now it's it's kind of centered as we go back and forth. So this image might be a little bit too big. We might do uh, 1,200, and then by uh, I don't know 800, something like that. That might be a better image size. Okay. But it's, it's centered, so that's good, and um, the top is aligned at the top of our page. Okay, So it's, uh, sometimes with images as the background, it's kind of, uh, kind of cute, but it does make it hard to read the text. So what we're probably going to want to do is put the text inside of a div, and then add some translucency to the background color of that div. So we can still sort of see the image behind, but uh, we can still read the text better. Okay, so that's what we're going to try here. We're going to um, add uh, this wrapper div article. So we've already created that div, and we just need to add some styles to it. Okay, so we'll take a look at some styles we can add. Uh, first, let's add the background color. And we can say that's RGBA. So red, green, blue, and alpha. <clears throat> the red, green, and blue um, are normally uh, two hex characters when we write it like this with the hash symbol. Right? We can have RGB, um, so FF0000 would be uh, all the way up on the red channel, zero on the uh, green channel, and zero on the blue channel. We can have different levels of those. Right? These are hexadecimal characters, which uh, a hexadecimal character uh, has 16 potential values, 0 through F. So 16 times 16 is 256. So there's 256 possibilities here using two hexadecimal uh, uh, characters. Right? So that's the number 0 to the number 255. Okay, if we switch over to a color format like this, RGBA, the RGB, those channels are 
the numbers between 0 and 255. Okay, so I could have um, 255, comma, 0, comma, 0. And then that would be red, but then I could add the alpha ch channel. The alpha channel 1.0 is no translucency. 1.0 is perfectly opaque. So I reload the screen, and that's that's red, and, and we can't see through it at all, right? So red's not really the color that we want, but uh, so we can we can adjust this, and we can let's see if we can pull up uh, something else. 200, and then 211. Let's see what that gives us. Kind of a pinkish beigey color. Uh, a little too much red there, so we can pull back the red. I'm looking for a kind of a beige brown. I mean, that's a little bit better. It's not as red, uh, but it's still kind of beigey. Kind of matches this background a little bit. Uh, and then I can I can um, dial down the, the opacity here. And if I bring this alpha value down towards zero, the more I bring this down, the more translucent. Uh, this this becomes so I can have uh, 0 0.9 for example and we can see we can just start making out the outline of the cat there but it's not enough we can't really tell what's going on so we want to we want to keep going down we might go 0.7 see what we have that's a little bit better uh, might want just a little bit more though Maybe 0.5 and there now we can kind of see the image but then that also gives us a nice uh, background for our text Okay, because if you have an image, the images can often um, drop into black pixels, and then your black text will run into the black pixels, and it'll become hard to read. Okay, so this is just kind of a trick that you can use to uh, still have images as a background, um, but then you can uh, still read the text on top of it. Okay, so this still this div uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Let's um, change the width of it. And we're going to do something this time using a percentage width. We're going to say the width of our article div, uh, we want to be, ooh, I left off the semicolon. OK, so the width of our article div, we want to be 80% of the width of the parent. OK, so if we refresh this page, we see as the parent grows, so does the child div. Right? So the article div is always 80% of the width of this parent. So when we make this grow, the other div grows as well. And as we shrink it, it's always 80% of the width. Okay, So uh, that's kind of nice, but we want this centered. So how do we center block elements? We do that with margin auto. So margin left should be auto. And margin right should be auto. Like that. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. Um, what about, uh, we need to add some padding here, right? Because the text is just smashed up against the side there. That doesn't look very good. Um, so we'll say padding. And we'll start at the top, and we'll say the top padding is 30px. The right padding, uh, the top and bottom, will be 30px and then the, the left and right padding will make 80px. Okay, so this is another alternative usage of padding. You can specify just the top and bottom and then the left and right. And if you refresh that page, now we see we've got padding around there. Now we need something that kind of you know outlines this to kind of make it pop out so we know that this is the, the article text sort of. Um, and so we can just use the outline property. Right, so we can use uh, well border or outline. Outline's kind of advanced. Outline doesn't take up space, it just lays on top of the image. But we'll, we'll use border because we've been talking about the box model. So we have border, and we're going to say we want um, a solid border, uh, black, and uh, 3px. All right, so we get this border here. All right, so that's not too bad. Um, but it still looks kind of uh, kind of rough. What we can do is we can add uh, a border radius. And so the corners of our border, we can kind of round them. So this is kind of a new thing. Border radius, we haven't discussed this yet. So we want the border radius to be five pixels. Uh, so what that's, that's saying is 
from the corner uh, or from the edge here we go five pixels and and we have basically a straight line from five pixels and it rotates and forms the corner so this corner the circular area of the corner which this should actually be something bigger like 20 pixels the the circle that forms the corner has a radius of 20 pixels okay, so if we refresh and we see this circle right you can imagine it being right here this is the radius so this is about 20 pixels right and that's what forms the border here okay so now we've got a nice little article this it looks a little bit better so far just very basic uh, CSS but we've got a nice um, you know flowing layout uh, depending on the size of your viewport um, the layout kind of flows with that alright so this is pretty nice uh, we want to add a couple more things though um, so let's say we have sections of our document uh, that we might want to have links to and we're gonna need a, a navigation uh, navigation menu okay so um, <clears throat> what we might do here is uh, make a navigation menu up here above article okay, so this is a navigation menu A lot of the same stuff we're going to want in here. We might want a background color, and we might make that background color slightly different. Um, <clears throat> we're going to want the width 80%, uh, margin auto, of course, and then the padding. Um, we'll have to play around with the padding a little bit. We're going to want a, a border around it and border radius too. Okay, so we'll take a look at this and just copy everything right away, uh, and we can we can change this. Um, color just a little bit so if we want to make that a little bit uh, lighter right, we can make that uh, 245 oops, 245 and 225 and 315 alright and refresh not that noticeable especially because of the alpha All right, so maybe want to do a little bit more or we could say this has no alpha I'll make that 1.0 alright and now we can kind of see it you know stand out a little bit more so you can play around with all this stuff of course we can make a darker brown um, lowering all these colors a little bit back up to one and see what the actual color would be it's more of a tan uh, mocha so we'll, we'll go with that but what we want to do here is we want to kind of um, we don't want rounded corners in between these two divs right so at the bottom of this div we don't want rounded corners and at the top of this one we don't so that way it looks like they they just connect flushly right so what we can do there <clears throat> I can use border radius differently. Um, we could say 20 px and then 0, 0. And I'm not sure that this is the correct order, so we'll have to try it and run it and see. So we'll refresh that. Okay, yeah, so I got it, I got it backwards there. So the first two, right, we see. Uh, for the nav menu, the first two, it's top left and then top right. So really these need to be the 21, so we can just swap these. And then I'll copy and paste these, or cut and paste, and we refresh. There we go. And so what, what happens there is the border radius here is now gone because it's border radius 0 and border radius 0 here, same for this little nav menu and you get a, a little header like that. Okay. So at the bottom of our article we want we might want to add margin bottom uh, you know, 80px. 
Okay, so that gives us a little bit of a uh, little bit of space at the bottom. So maybe we don't want to go all the way down there so the image repeats. Uh, we can either make a bigger image, say 200 by 800. Let's just do that. We'll make this 200 by 900 or 1200 by 900. There we go. We get a different image there, but it doesn't um, repeat when we scroll down. Okay. Uh, the other thing we could do is fix the position, so the, the attachment. So we could say background uh, attachment is fixed, which means it won't scroll when the content scrolls. If I reload the page, so this doesn't scroll when the, the content scrolls. So we can switch back now to our other image, the 800 one. And so now the cat image doesn't scroll when we scroll our document. Okay, so this is going to be our nav menu, and we're going to have different sections inside of this text that we're going to link to. Okay, so <clears throat> we might put headings in here, uh, H, uh, H2, and we're going to have an ID here, and this is going to say intro, and this is our introduction. And then um, we might have another, we can um, actually copy all of this because this might be a really long article, right? That has like a Wikipedia entry, many different sections. Um, make sure our indentation is right there. Okay, so we have a second section and um, this might be um, history or something like that. And we'll change the ID. So the ID attribute there should only ever be one HTML element in your HTML page with the ID attribute set to something specific, like intro. So since I already specified intro above, this one has to be something else. So this is going to be history. Right. And then we might have another section. Um, right, so this isn't history. Um, <clears throat> Domestication. Okay, so I have I have three kind of sections here in my article, and if I reload the page, we see introduction. That's nice, and then we've got a history section, and then domestication section. Now, as you can see, it, as this grows, I might this might be you know lots and lots of different sections. So I might want to have a listing at the at the top here of what sections. I want um, I want to have links to right so I can make a nav menu up here so this navigation menu is where I'm going to have links <clears throat> so to make a link I use the a tag it stands for anchor and I have to use the hyperlink reference href to specify where in the document I want to link to okay so inside the quotes is where that goes and um, <clears throat> I also might want to just have a link to this page, right? The home page itself, right? So if I do that, I can link to this page or uh, cats.html, which is this page as well, right? So we'll do dot slash first. I think that should work. Um, and we reload the page, click on home. Oh, it doesn't like that. Okay, so we'll have to go to uh, cats. HTML. Okay, and so that you see that loads when I click this link, whatever's in the href loads up here. Okay, so this just takes us to the home, and then we also have different link sections below. So if I want intro, I'm going to make another a tag and link to the hash sign remember when we use CSS selectors the hash means ID so this is hash intro and this is going to be uh, let's see introduction 
click on that, you see it jumps, it skips to the introduction. So introduction aligns at the very top of the page. Okay, And I can add different links here. So I can add another a tag. It has an href, hashtag history. All right, so I can reload this page, and now I see we can jump to the history, jump to the domestication. And also notice in the URL, the URL has changed. That hash right there jumps to an ID at this URL. So if I wanted to make a bookmark or I wanted to send somebody to a specific uh, Wikipedia article, for, exa for example, in a specific area of that document, this is actually built into the URL itself. Okay, so I can open up a new tab and just paste this. And when I paste this URL, it's not just cats.html, it's automatically going to the ID uh, of the element of domestication and it links me right there okay so that's kind of nice so you can add bookmarks to different sections of your page if you wanted to via the URL okay so this is pretty nice um, you know we might also want to build you know a, a, a navigation menu at the at the bottom as well and sometimes they have uh, navigation menus that that hover when you scroll down they, they lock to the top of the bar Right, so that's all advanced. This is kind of just the basics. So one other thing we're going to do is we're going to make one of these pages, except for dogs, and we're going to add a link to the dogs page here. So <clears throat> we're going to add a href, and this is going to go to dogs.html, and then we'll just call it dogs. All right, so that page doesn't exist yet. So we save our cats page, right, and we click on dogs and file is not found, right? So what we need to do is make a, a, a dogs page so we can just duplicate this cats page. So right click and duplicate or copy it from the terminal or whatever you want to do. And we just need to change some stuff, right? So we can look up uh, dog on Wikipedia. domestic dog um, it doesn't appear to have as big of an intro right, so we can go down here and inside of our p tags there's our paragraph tags um, we'll have to redo our setup here as open and, and close and those these are our dog ones. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all of this down to the history, but we're going to copy and paste it a couple times so it's uh, similar in length to the cat one we did. All right, so this is just basically uh, Shift Control D to duplicate. It's like copy and paste. All right, so I've just duplicated these two paragraphs. All right, and then under history, I'm going to do the same thing. Copy all of this and go down here and replace this cat stuff. Paste. All right, and then under domestication, the same thing. Paste. Okay, so this is all text about dogs now. Um, that's good. We want to change our navigation menu. The main heading is now going to be dogs. All right. The, uh, the home page is going to link to dogs.html um, and then we'll have a link to cats over here and this will be cats.html okay then the only other thing we need to do is adjust our images okay so instead of place kitten we can have uh, place uh, puppy and then they do it a little bit differently do it like that. 
Okay. And then we can save our document and go to dogs and it should show up. We place the puppy, we now have dog information. It says dogs at the top. We link to cats. We can link to the history section or the domestication section, right, any of that stuff. Okay, so there's one final thing that we might want to add to both of these, and this is an image. A lot of times you have an article and you might want to have an image in the middle over here somewhere, right, or, or to the left. All right, so let's add a quick image, uh, and it can be anywhere in the text, right? So we'll say it's somewhere in the second paragraph. We're going to be talking about, um, we're going to show an image of whatever it is we're talking about. So <clears throat> right within the, the paragraph tag, I can add an image tag, right? And then I'm going to add the source for my image, and that's going to be uh, place puppy again, http colon slash slash place hyphen puppy slash and then uh, I need some image of a puppy right that might be you know 200 pixels by um, I don't know, 300 pixels something like that okay and we have this image in here and we reload the page save it image source matter. It's probably something silly that I'm missing. Okay, so I have an image, IMG tag, source inside of the introduction, and this is dogs.html. And we'll save that. Refresh. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's not showing up. Uh, placepuppy.com. That will do it. Something simple. There we go. Placepuppy.com. And that gives us our little puppy. All right, let's try to move it back into the text like I had it before. Okay, so over here we have an image of the puppy. All right now, by default, now you might wonder why this is the default, and I'm, I'm not sure the answer to that. It just puts it in line. So this image is an inline element, and the baseline of the text lines up with the bottom of the photo. Okay, so this is almost never what you want. So you can change that with the CSS property. We're gonna add a class to this image and we're gonna call it uh, image one, img1. All right, and then in our CSS, we have dot img1. And we're gonna say, we want this image to float to the right of our page and all the text should, should go around it. All right, so we reload that and that allows our image to kind of float in the page like this all right and to kind of make it stand out just a little bit we might want to add a border around the image all right so border solid black 1px <clears throat> all right and then uh, we might want to add margins to the uh, to the, the left a little bit to keep the text away from it just slightly and um, but we still want it to line up on the right hand side there so we might add just a little uh, margin left 10px and all of this stuff this gets into the details and the subtleties of, of what's pleasing to the eye all right and you just add a little space there right you might Maybe a little above too. I'm not sure. We could we could try that margin top, and margin bottom. All right, and so we see that margin shows there. So it depends, kind of what you want to do. So that's one image. And another thing you can do with the images is the image can be the content of your. Uh, your um, a tag right so if I'm making a link I can actually make it when you click on the image I can make that a link and to do that I just wrap the image with an a tag I can say a href equals and this is just going to be dogs uh, HTML it's 
slash a. Okay, so now whenever I click on the image, it, it's a link to this page. See, notice my cursor changes too to let me know that it is a link. And I click on it and it goes to dogs. Right? Or I could make this cats or whatever. Okay, so that's that's one way to add an image into the text, and so the float right is important. You want the image to float to the right and all of the all of the text to surround it. So then somewhere down here in history we might have another one. Um, <clears throat> And this will be, we'll make this one, you know, 300 by 200. And this will be image 2. So we go back up here and we make an image 2 class, basically copying everything from image 1. And the only thing we change is float left. We reload the page. Um, now we have to fix the margin because we actually want the margin on the right a little bit and no margin on the left, so I gotta tweak that one as well. So margin right should be 10px. And th that subtlety, like this doesn't look good. You don't really, you wouldn't think it would make that much of a difference, but then when I, when I change it, that looks a lot better, right? So it's those details that really make things pop out a little bit. All right, so <clears throat> got the border, the margin. Um, this is a link too, so that's nice. And that should be good enough. Uh, oh, here we go. This is our second one. Oh, that's because I did image one. I was still looking at the first image. Image two, there we go. Refresh. So image one is floated to the right, and image two is floated to the left. There we go. Now we got the, the margin there. Right. So those details are important. And uh, we can do the same thing with the cat. We'll just copy this link and we're just going to tweak it a little bit. We'll go over to cats.html and then somewhere in here in cats.html we paste this in. It's going to link to cats.html. We're going to say this is placekitten.com and they, instead of the X in the middle, they use a slash. So that's uh, 200, 300. And so now we should have a cat image in there for image one. And then down here in history, we'll do one for uh, image two. And we'll reverse this and we'll say this is 300 pixels and 200 pixels. Save that. Refresh, uh, we've got dogs, we can click on the link to cats. Now we're at cats, and we haven't floated this, so we're gonna make this float to the right, and uh, make this one float to the left, just like we did with dogs. So we can just copy the CSS we already have here. Just copy that over, control C, copy, and go to cats, and then paste it in. Just refresh the page, and we see uh, we get the nice effect of the text wrapping around the image. And you click on the image, and it goes to cats.html. Okay, so that's a basic kind of article style layout. Very, very simple. There's a lot more you could do to obviously make this uh, prettier, but with relatively small amount of CSS, we're able to, you know, make a page that looks uh, reasonably uh, well styled. So this is the basics of sort of the box model, um, alignment and positioning, uh, vertical alignment, uh, text align. So and then uh, we got into some of the uh, hyperlinks, right? So the A tags, where we can link from one part of a document to another part of the document, or um, to another page entirely. Okay, and it doesn't have to just link to your particular pages. You can link to any page using um, a URL. So HTTP. Uh, colon slash slash google.com for example would be fine for you to be able to link to for the href okay so that should do it for this demo